Hi everyone, my name is Strang at Xperia. Today, we are going to explore funnel experimentation in an app environment. We'll cover what funnel experimentation involves, its key benefits, its importance in modern app, along with a case study to better understand its implementation in the real world. Firstly, what is the funnel? A funnel represents multiple steps process user go through to achieve a desired action, like making a purchase or completing a registration. The example on the left is the funnel of a fashion app. It basically involves users logging into the app, visit the product page, add the products to cart, and then go to the checkout, filling out, billing, shipping information, payment information, and then they finalize their purchase. This whole process is the funnel of this fashion app. Depending on the businesses or the um, nature of an app, there could be multiple funnels that they be managing and optimizing for. In terms of funnel experimentation specifically, we can optimize either a single page or multiple steps across the entire funnel. With single page testing, We'll focus on optimizing one particular area within the funnel. And this particular case is a, the assessment result page. Within this uh, page, it's been identified that there's been high drop off, and that's why most of the optimization effort was dedicated to this page. On the other hand, multi page further testing takes a more holistic approach by optimizing two or more steps in the user journey. It could mean that we'll optimize the query question areas as well as the assessment result. And it's also possible that um, we we'll optimize the appointment booking area as well. Now, let's take a deep dive into this. Funnel testing is also known as funnel sequencing testing. In many ways, it works similarly to A-B testing, but funnel testing goes deeper. Funnel testing compare multiple related pages that form a key user flow, like an app style up process or a subscription quiz. Think of it as taking a holistic view. Instead of just optimizing for one page, we aim to improve the entire funnel to increase conversion rate. It allows us to address user pain points that might stretch across several steps. Traditionally, multi-page testing involves testing recurring elements only, such as security certificate or a persistent live chat model across multiple pages of the funnel to see how their presence or absence impacts conversions. Alternatively, you can create a challenger funnel with change changes across all relevant pages and compare it against the original funnel, the control. And here is the imp most important point. Any changes we make per variation should be cohesive. It's not about isolated tweaks here and there, but creating a unified experience that align, our align with our hypothesis and address user frustration across the funnel. Now that we understand what funnel testing is and how it works, let's explore some of its key benefits. Funnel testing helps overcome limitations of single page optimization. While it's valuable for refining a specific step, testing specific area in the funnel can backfire sometimes. Improvements on one page may not address issues in the rest of the user journey, and sometimes, Changes on a single page can even disrupt the flow elsewhere. It may not account for a collective impact. Therefore, funnel testing allows us to understand the impact of changes on elements across a full user journey. Enable testing for cohesive experience. Look leak in the conversion funnel and only identify the most efficient and intuitive flow. Additionally, 
one of the standout advantages of funnel testing is its ability to provide a deeper understanding of user journeys, enabling a higher level of insight. By analyzing the full funnel test result, you can uncover bottlenecks and friction points from one step to another that may not be apparent when looking at individual pages. Because funnel testing optimizes multiple pages, it often leads to a more significant impact on conversions compared with single page tests. By addressing issues across the entire funnel, you create a smoother user experience that can substantially increase conversion rate. Funnel testing also opens up opportunity for personalizations. You can tailor your approach to different user segments which can be implemented across the flow. For example, one flow for user coming from pay search and organic search, and a different flow for user coming directly or via social media. This means you can create personalized experiences that better meet the needs and preferences of various groups, enhancing overall engagement and satisfaction. Hi. This is Romo Santiago, founder of Experiment Nation. To celebrate our fifth anniversary, we are holding weekly giveaways until November 29th. Prizes include books, free consultation services, and even a t-shirt. To enter, simply join Experiment Nation Slack and fill out the entry form that can be found in the description or through the QR code on the screen. Now back to the session. So why is funnel testing so crucial in an app environment? App options involve multiple flows with complex interactions. And with funnel testing, can optimize them in a much more agile, efficient way, allowing a lot better engagement and a more cohesive experience. It's also proven to be particularly valuable for apps with subscription models. Apps that relying on subscriptions require frequent optimization of sign-up, cancellations, reactivations, and other retention strategies. Funnel testing have enhanced these critical stages to improve user acquisition and long-term value. Additionally, changes made in one part of the app funnel can impact other flow or platforms. Funnel testing help us to take that bird eye view and account for those critical elements as part of the experiment development process, ensuring a consistent experience throughout. While funnel testing offers many benefits, it's equally important to be aware of potential challenges that can arise during the process. First, funnel sequencing or funnel testing require careful planning. It's crucial to deeply understand the customer decision-making process. Any changes made within the funnel, especially if they alter the sequence of steps, need to be handled delicately. Entering the order of steps may disrupt the user mental models, leading to confusion or even resistance, which can negatively impact the overall user experience and the experiment result. This is why it's essential that all changes align closely with customer expectations and preferences. Another challenge comes with analyzing and tracking the experimentation results. Funnel testing often spans multiple pages or stages, which make it difficult to pinpoint exactly where the friction happens or where the issues arise to draw insight for learning or iterating. Without proper tracking, it can be tough to measure the impact of changes accurately. This is where having the right tool and test measurement plan can become critical for effective funnel experimentations. It's also posed a greater conversion risk, given that these changes, again, uh, spread across multiple screen and touch point, especially when it happened at a, a critical, during a critical funnel. Additionally, technical challenges related to mobile app UX are also common in funnel testing in app. Things like app loss time, loss time, different screen sizes, operating system, device comparability 
can all influence the user experience and the outcome of your experiment. Testing across multiple devices and ensuring smooth user experience on each one is not always straightforward and any developed issues that arise can disrupt the experimentation effectiveness. When planning a funnel experiment, there are several key considerations that ensure accurate and meaningful results. First, you need to have clear objective and hypothesis. Without clearly defined goals, it's difficult to measure success. Your hypothesis should be specific to the pain point you want to address within the user journey, setting the foundation for the test. Next, it's important to account for interconnected flow. Changes made at one stage of the funnel can impact other parts of the user journey. So it's critical to consider the ripple effects of your changes throughout the entire funnel. In terms of execution, funnel testing must be used to measure the impact of only one or a few variables at a time. Testing too many elements simultaneously can cloud the results and make it hard to pinpoint what driving outcomes. Additionally, you should ensure the same number of test variations for every page in the experiment. For example, if you are going to have two challenger funnels, each of which, each of which offers a solution to the user problem, in the hypothesis. Every page of that funnel should have two test variations only. This maintains consistency across the user journey, allowing you to analyze the result most accurately. And finally, it's crucial to measure both micro and macro goal. While macro goal can be an overall conversion rate improvement, retention, and things like that, uh, measuring micro goal, such as drop off rates from one step to another, engagement with the new tested element and so on, can really help provide a clearer picture of what the user behaviors are during the test. Let's look at a real case study, which is the reactivation challenges of a meal plan study. So this startup come to us asking for some support with their reactivations uh, experience. From their user research, uh, they were able to find out that most of their customers were concerned with how they would be able to make changes upon activating their subscription via the app. They worried that they won't be able to review and update the payment method, review and choose the payment date and time, uh, making different changes to the meal included in the plan as well as apply any promo code that could be applicable to them. Some of these components did exist were sitting silo within the app and making it very difficult for users to know specifically how to navigate and how to make those changes prior to reactivating. This pain point leads to a low reactivation rate and poor retention for this startup. Understanding this user pain point, we come up with this hypothesis. By updating the reactivation call to action label, the reactivation flow to account for the changes user required prior to reactivating, we can help them feel confident in resuming their subscription, improving reactivation rate and increased retention. Now let's examine what the current reactivation experience look like. So this is the current control experience. User would go to the account management screen within the app and they would select resume my plan to reactivate their subscription. At that time, the meal plan subscription will 100% reactivate it and they will be taken to a plan confirmation screen where they can review meal inclusions and the total amount page on this confirmation screen. As you can see here, none of the changes that the user mentioned before um, were included as part of this experience. They were not at all accounted for, and they all, again, sitting on silo within the app experience. 
now, knowing this, we propose with this new experience, with these test exchanges. So firstly, on the account management screen, the label of the call to action is changed from um, resume subscription to review and resume plan. After user click on review and resume plan, they will be taken to a new screen where they can review what they are reactivating. They can then have a look and make changes to plan payment days and time, payment method, apply any offers available to them, add or remove any meals that they don't want for that week or that month, and the total uh, amount that they will pay. And once these changes are made, the user can simply reactivate their plan. So a few things to consider here is that as part of um, these variations, we also need to account for a slightly new feature, which is to check for a promo code that applicable to a specific users. Um, and need to also make sure any reactivation SMS triggers work with the test variations. And once user click resume plan, they will be taken to the plan confirmation screen again. And here, this is where they can review new inclusion, total amount pay, as well as the discount that was included, uh, which is previously not available on this screen. And as well as uh, the selected payment method that in the paid and time. With this experiment, we were able to achieve 24% increase in reactivation rate 12% improve in retention at the 90% observed um, power. This is a great result and it's enough for us to conclude that variation one is the winning version. Key learning from this case study is that because of the um, tracking on the CTA level, we were able to know that users are actually more inclined to click on this CTA now that they know that they could review their plan before reactivating. Um, we also were able to see a clear color relation between those that make changes to their new inclusion. Um, they are more, much more likely to reactivate. And lastly, we also see strong engagement and interaction with payment day time, uh, as well as uh, the payment method even though there are no clear uh, correlations uh, with the final, the macro goal. And all of this um, just give us a very clear evidence of how we can use funnel testing to its full power so that we can optimize the experience within app from end to end, making it possible for brands and businesses to deliver an optimal experience to users. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line at train at Xperia.com.au. Hi, this is Romo Santiago, founder of Experiment Nation. To celebrate our fifth anniversary, we are holding weekly giveaways until November 29th. Prizes include books, free consultation services, and even a t-shirt. To enter, simply join Experiment Nation Slack and fill out the entry form that can be found in the description or through the QR code on the screen. Now back to the session.